So Traver, yeah. let me ask this because I feel like the majority of our listeners are women. Okay. As women, how, how do we show up? Like, what do you mm. see, um, from the perspective of maybe what women are missing or what women could do to support our brothers in a way that maybe yeah. we aren't like, could you give us a little bit of your two cents on that? Yeah, it's a beautiful question, first of all. So thank you just for asking it. I think what's happening now, this is what I've seen, is that there is simply a recognition of male suffering. And that's, that's recent. That I think the old perpetrator-victim dynamic was so strong, you know, a couple of years ago, especially when I wrote the book, that it was, you're on the perpetrator side, so we really don't care if you're suffering. And that was just glomming or lumping all men into the same group. And now there's been this trickle out of information of, wow, that domestic violence rates aren't exactly 99% to 1%. Or that men die significantly earlier in every, at every age. That, that, that 10 out of the top 10 most dangerous jobs in the world occupied by men. Addiction rates, suicide rates, depression rates. Um, we can take every, I, used, I say this kind of flippantly, but not. We can take every neg every statistic that doesn't have to do with breasts and ovaries. Anyone that's negative, men are at the top of it. And suddenly that's starting to penetrate the culture, right? There's great, there's Instagram pages dedicated to this. Uh, there's the holistic psychologist did a whole big report on, on men's work. Sarit Chawla just put out a whole bunch of information on men's work, on, on where we are and the reality of where we are. And I'm not a woman, so I, I can theoretically understand the anger, upset, set, or even hate towards men. I feel it as a dude. Like, what the fuck are we doing, you know, on a lot of days? But I think to recognize that there's an individual in front of you who, if he's a male, he's still an individual. He's still gone through trauma. And some of, some of the most horrific trauma, you know, I've... I've been in this game now for about seven years and the things that I've heard from men that they've lived through as boys, as, as military guys, as law enforcement, as first responders, as fathers, as husbands, it just cripples me. Like I'll, I'll be like, thank you for telling me that. You know, I know we're in a workshop. I'll go outside and just sob. Like, I cannot believe that happened to you and you're still standing here. And be like, well, what was, what were the, I just got chills. Um, like what were the resources provided to you to help you navigate that? You know, like, oh, I was told to man the fuck up yeah. or I got put in the Marine Corps so I wouldn't go to jail. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, cool. So more trauma. That's great. Uh, that's so, so a long story to, to, to wrap it up rather is I think as women recognize that the human in front of you has a past, the human in front of you may have had more trauma than you can shake your fist at more trauma than you can understand. And that doesn't mean that he's not responsible for his own actions, his own karma, his own life. But he's fucking human. And I think when we start to get there, then we actually will solve the problem. When we have the boogeyman of toxic masculinity and anything and everything under the sun is just like, oh sweet, it's toxic masculinity, cool. We can all sleep at night now. We're not getting to the root of the issue. And the root of the issue is human, right? And it is, Danae, it is people like you. It is mothers. It is, it is daughters. It is sisters. It is wives who, for the first five years of my career, would reach out to me and say, I can't say this publicly because I'll get annihilated by other women. But my son is hurting. Mm -hmm. My dad's hurting. My, fa my, my husband's hurting. And, and I don't know, I, he needs help. But I can't even say that he's hurting because they'll say like, well, fuck him. Good. He deserves it. He's one of them. He's on the perpetrator side. And so simply asking the question, I think, is a beautiful start. And then recognizing two things. One, this man most likely has been traumatized. And two, he's not a woman. So he's not going to deal with things in the same way that you are. He doesn't have the same innate skill and understanding of emotion. Right? I don't think the same way. We don't act the same way. We're different, and that's okay that we're different. 
I said to my partner early on, like this relationship will be successful if you let me be a man. It will not if you want a 190-pound bald female as your partner. Like, it ain't going to work because that's not me, <laughs> right? And continue to do the things that you are doing. For years, women, more women bought my book in the first three years than men did. Some of them bought like dozens and dozens of copies and, and gave it out. And I would say what your opportunity is, is to take that man and walk him up to the door of change. But he has to put his hand on that door himself. Mm -hmm. And this would upset a lot of women, but I still believe it. On the other side of that door needs to be a man. Mm. Why? We listen to each other. We feel different in a room full of just us. I don't care. And this isn't heteronormative. It doesn't care gay or straight. You get a room full of men together, something happens. There's an honesty level that changes. There's a vulnerability level that changes. You take one woman and bring her into that room, dynamic is completely different. Totally. We, it's, that's, and that's the opportunity for us. We as men need to step up. Right? I have an ethos in the book. And number two is be, be your brother's keeper. This is our time. You guys have, women have done so much work and so much growth and so much de de self-development, so much transformation. God bless you. And now it is our time to look up and go like, wow, you know all those negative statistics? Uh, that's us. Yeah. We can't be like, hey, ladies, knock, knock, knock. There's all these negative statistics. We need you to fix it for us, yeah. which a lot of guys are doing. That needs to stop. We need to go look in the mirrors or go look at our brothers or look at other men and say, I love you so fucking much. You need to do better. Mm -hmm. I love you so fucking much. I'm not going to let you do this anymore. And men need to look in the mirror and say the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. You don't think anybody cares about you? Do you care about you? Yeah. Right? Do you hold yourself to a standard? Do you give a shit about you? Will you hold yourself at a time of need or will you collapse? Will you run to the bottle? Will you run to porn? Or will you sit there and say, okay, I got you. This is hard. Mm -hmm. This is going to suck. That was the initiation of my divorce. Mm -hmm. No vices. A lot of time on the bathroom floor, snotting all over the place, going, I think I got ourselves. First time ever, but I think I got you. And that I'll take for the rest of my life. That was worth every ounce of pain. So how do women do it? Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for asking the question. Men, we need to do it.